Dixie Community Church, located at 1600 West 25th Avenue in Gary, Indiana. We are so glad you are joining us today. No matter what we are facing in our lives, we believe God is in control. He is the ever-present help in the time of trouble. With the help of modern technology, we can gather virtually to praise, worship, and minister God's Word. If this is your first time tuning in, we would like to give you a special welcome and pray you will tune in again and again. Now join our St. Timothy Community Church congregation as we praise and worship our Lord and Savior together. As we gather this morning in worship, we certainly thank God for giving us another day to come together in his holy place. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. This is none other than the house of God and in this house, we worship and we praise his holy name. And so when we say, let all the earth keep silent before him, we're not saying that our praise keeps silent. We're not saying that our worship keeps silent. We're not even saying that our giving keeps silent, or our prayers, or the reading of scripture, or hearing God's word keeps silent. But what ought to keep silent is the trial and tribulations we're experiencing. What ought to keep silent is the noise that the world is raising. What ought to keep silent and pause in reference of God is when the enemy is coming up against us, the enemy ought to keep silent. We ought to focus our minds and attention on the God that has woke us up this morning, the God that has started us on a brand new day, a God that has clothed us in our right mind, the God that has given us health and strength this morning, we focus on the God, our creator, our sustainer of all things. Let us pray, almighty God, we thank you. We thank you for being evident in our lives this morning. We thank you, O oh God, that you have allowed us to come in the spirit of praise and worship unto you. We thank you, O oh Lord, because you have made a way for us. And so this morning we pause in this busy week, the close of the week, to say, God, we thank you for Monday. Thank you for Tuesday. Thank you for Wednesday and all that you did for us on Thursday. And then, God, even on Friday as you have visited us, we thank you. And then Saturday, God, as you have kept us through Saturday, we thank you. And as we laid our heads down last night and woke up to a new day we have never seen before this morning, we still have the same words on our hearts and on our lips. We say thank you. And so now, God, you said, enter your gates with thanksgiving and enter your courts with praise and be thankful unto you and bless your name because you said in your word that you are good, 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 you are good, God, and you're greatly to be praised. And now, God, we say, have your way in this place. Let healing happen. Let miracles happen. Let transformation happen. Let someone's spirit be lifted up this morning that may have been down all this week. God, let us come into your presence this morning with praise and with thanksgiving and with laughter, and with joy, with peace and love on our hearts. And God, we be so careful to give you the praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God say together, amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise this morning. And as our choir leads us in worship, we sing and we rejoice as they lead us in praise. that you're not alone today. With God in your life, you're never alone. 
If no earthly hands can hold you, God will always extend his heavenly arms to you. So know that this day, that you're never alone. God is always present, always with us, and will always be with you. So as we enter into worship, think about the good things that God has done for you and what he will do for you. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. Defender behind me. Defender behind me. Oh, this is my favorite part. I won't fear. I won't fear. I won't fear because I'm filled with anointing. Because I'm so filled, my cup's overflowing. My cup overflowing. No weapon, no weapon can ever harm me. No weapon can harm me. I won't fear. Verses. He always guides me. Through mountains and valleys. His joy is refreshing. It restores my soul. So I 
If God is all you need, put your hands together. That was all right for myself, but I said, if God is all you need, put your hands together. Has he been bread when you were hungry? Has he been water when you were thirsty? Has he not been a mother to the motherless? Has he been a father to the fatherless? He's been a doctor in the sick room. He's been a lawyer in the courtroom. He's been someone's burden bearer. And he's all we need. When you stop and think about all the good things God has done for you, when you think, you begin to thank. Because God has been so good to us. And if you believe it, someone ought to say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone ought to say thank you, Jesus. Because he's worthy to be praised. At this time, we are going to approach his throne. Because he is all that we need. And we see every day that he has been keeping us over and over again. And as Pastor exclaimed, he kept us from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and again on Sunday. And it's not by, it's not by choice. It's because you are a child of the King. And so as we approach his throne, let us lay our burdens on him. The Bible says, cast your cares on me. And we serve a God that he is saying, put all of your cares, put all of your worries on me so that I can be your burden bearer and heavy load sharer. Has he been your burden bearer? If he has ever lifted up a burden from your shoulders, give him some praise. So as we go to him, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we love you. Lord, we praise your holy name. Lord, first before we come to you, we ask that you forgive us of our sins. Those that we know of and those that we don't know of, Lord, we just ask for forgiveness. God, we thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. We thank you for our church family. We thank you, Lord, for our families. We thank you for just being a mighty good God to us. Lord, we don't call on any other name. We don't call on Buddha or Constantinople. We don't call on any other God but Jesus. And it seems like in our situations, the more that we call you, the better it gets. So Jesus, we speak it over our lives. Jesus, we speak you over our families. Jesus, we speak it in our health situation. Jesus, we speak it over our financial situation. Jesus, make it better. Because we know that you're able to do everything but fail. So God, continue to touch, heal, and deliver. Continue to see about us. Lord, I know that you're able because your word says that you're able, and we've seen you do it time and time before. God, we thank you again for our church. We thank you for our leaders. We thank you for our pastor. God, we ask for a reciprocal blessing right now that as you bless him, you bless us, and as you bless us, you bless him in the mighty name of Jesus. Any plan, any attack that Satan tries to plan for him, God, we ask that you rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. Because your word says whatever we bind on earth, you'll bind in heaven, and whatever we loose on earth, you'll loose in heaven. And God, we're trusting you right now. Because your word says, faith without works is dead. So God, we're working to be better Christians. We're working to be better believers. God, we're working in your vineyard. God, your word says, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. God, give us the vision to run with. That we may not be tired or weary. But Lord, continue to keep our hearts and our minds. God, we ask that you bless this city, this community, God. We've asked 
that you bless again our kids that are going to school, oh God. I rebuke Satan right now in the name of Jesus. Any fiery dart that he tries to throw against our youth, against our kids, God, I ask that you block it, oh God. Present a hedge of protection, God. Satan has only come to steal, kill, and destroy, but we damn Satan back to hell right now from where he is from. And God, we give you all the glory and honor and praise. In Jesus' name, we ask that you continue to keep our sick and shut in. We ask that you continue to keep everyone, God, that is online viewing, for our Facebook and website viewers as well. So we thank you and we love you. We usher you in our service. Rest, rule, and abide within us. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. And we will all please stand for the morning hymn of Blessed Assurance. And for our online viewers, it should be on the screen to join together. Well, everyone to join in on this, please, because we know we all do have such blessed assurance that Jesus is ours. Let's go, bless it. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. of salvation, purchase of God. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story. This is my song.
giving glorious honor and praise to our Father God, to his precious Son, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, to Reverend Dr. Jackson, to Reverend Curran, officers, members, friends, and the viewing and listening audience of St. Timothy Community Church, good morning. We'd like to recognize our greeters for the morning, and they are members of the August birthday group. Could you please stand? Thank you. These are your announcements for the week. First of all, please be cognizant of the announcements that are in the bulletin, which include the October birthday group, uh, the Gold Timers, and the church's 96th anniversary and picnic, as, um, as well as the church revival. St. Timothy Community Church announcements, August 14th, 2022. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 18. Please join us on Wednesday at noon by dialing 712-432-8399. The passcode is 795209. There is power in prayer. Please remember our sick, our shut-in, our bereaved, and those in need of special prayer, and they include Arbelia Carruthers and Charlene Jones. Please contact the church office to be added to the sick and shut-in list and for pastor to know who is sick and shut-in. And of course, that number is 219-977-0079. May God bless you richly for giving to St. Timothy and our associated ministries. We encourage you to continue giving through our website by clicking the donate button, or you can download and use the Zelle app by using our church's email address, stsaintimothy at hotmail.com. Also, you can utilize the U.S. mail or the church's mail slot. Contributions of any amount are always welcomed and very much appreciated. The flowers placed on the altar are in remembrance of our beloved former pastors, Reverend Dr. Robert E. Lowry and Reverend Dr. Alfred L. Johnson. The August birth month flower is gladiolus. The gladiolus flower expresses the strength of character, remembrance, faithfulness, and moral integrity. All are welcome to take one at the end of service today for as long as they last. Thank you, and that's from Mr. Herbert Dunaway, who was the August Birthday Group President, and Miss Lily Joyner, who was the August Birthday Group Hospitality Person. Calling all tutor volunteers. The St. Timothy Community Church Tutoring and Enrichment Program will be starting back Tuesday, September 13th, 2022. We will have openings for volunteer tutors in the following areas, reading, language arts, math, science, social studies, career mentoring, ACT and SAT prep. The sessions will be one hour in length on Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 4 to 5 p.m. and from 5 to 6 p.m. Please note, tutors do not have to be members of St. Timothy. Volunteer forms are now available at the receptionist desk. For more information, please feel free to contact program coordinators, Dr. Karen Jones, raise your hand, and Mrs. Shirley Moorhead, please raise your hand. You can contact the church office at 219-94, I'm sorry, you can contact 219-944-2011 or St. Timothy Community Church at 219-977-0079. Greetings, St. Timothy Community Church family. This message is only for members who dial in to our Sunday school and morning worship services using a telephone system. Please use the following numbers to access our services. The following numbers will replace our prayer line number. The new dial-in number is 312-626-6799.
The meeting ID number is 845-9303-5132. If you have any problems accessing the service through our dial-in number, please contact the church office and you know the number 219-977-0079. All youth between the ages of 1 through 18 are asked to please turn in a youth registration form who has a birthday this year from August to December. You may see Mrs. Sandra Starling for the form or contact the office. Attorney Candace Smith, president of the National Black Prosecutors Association, the Chicago chapter, traveled to Houston for the NBPA National Conference. Attorney Smith and her board members at the conference received the Chapter of the Year Award for their service and programming throughout the year. In addition, Attorney Smith was appointed to the prestigious position of Regional Director for the Great Lakes Region for the remaining one-year term on the National Executive Board for NBPA. The blessings do not stop there as when she returned home, she received a promotion from her office to first chair in the Child Support Enforcement Div Division of the Cook County State's Attorney Office. Congratulations, Attorney Candace Smith. Your family is truly proud of you, as is your St. Timothy family. And I remember when she wasn't born. <laughs> Check out our newly designed website, www.stsaintimothychurch.org. Let me say that again, www.stsaintimothychurch.org. Once you enter this address, you will have access to the new site. You will also have access to a new method of giving called Givelify. This app is used by several churches and it allows you to select a donation amount and then select from a list of funds such as mortgage elimination, weekly tithes, etc. You can donate your money or you can continue to use the Zelle app and PayPal if you like. You will continue to have access to our media page so you can tune in to the streaming of our various church events. Remember to download the church app onto your smartphones. This gives you access to church resources and media wherever you are. The app can be, phone on, can be found on the iPhone App Store or the Android Play Store. If you have any questions, please contact the church office at 219-977-0079. I did not have any community announcements. And so I'd like to say that we at St. Timothy Community Church are always pleased to have visitors. I did not receive any cards. However, if we have any visitors, could you please stand at this time? Give us your name and where you are from. Yes, may I have your name and where you're from? Did you hear that, Pastor? Can you say that again? We, we have now have the microphone. All of it or just some of it? <laughs> My name is Rus originally from Chicago, Illinois, mm -hmm. and I attend Gospel Tabernacle Church of God in Christ in Montgomery, Alabama. And I'm visiting my very good friend. He and I graduated from eighth grade together, Ronald Broom. All right. <laughs> Thank you for visiting with us. Are there any other visitors at this time? Can we please give our visitor a warm St. Timothy welcome?
invite now our pastor, Reverend Dr. Ramin Jackson. We are um, certainly glad um, that uh, uh, we've had uh, some visitors and those that uh, are visiting with us and uh, you didn't feel like a visitor, so you didn't stand. That's wonderful as well. And we're just glad to have uh, each and every one of you here with us. Certainly, we uh, also welcome um, our online uh, virtual um, audience as well that is tuning in to us this morning. Um, and I always uh, say to uh, encourage you, and particularly those who are on your Facebook pages, to uh, hit the share button and to share uh, the service this morning. Um, those that may be in person, if you have a Facebook page, this may be a good time to go on your Facebook page and share um, the uh, service this morning. They will go on, that would spread to your contacts and friends. There may be someone who's sitting at home right now who may be in despair and may need a word from the Lord and be a part of the worship experience, and we want to encourage um, you this morning to do uh, just that. Uh, certainly, um, you should have received in the mail um, a mailing from our church, uh, a cover letter um, from me with some um, um, flyers to, uh, that would, was also inserted uh, in the uh, envelope. envelope. Um, so we wanted to do that so you have something tangible in your hands to know what's going on in the life of our church. Uh, it seems as if August, um, September, October uh, are really our busiest uh, months, and then November, we do a couple of things in November, and then we close out, of course, in December with a couple of uh, events and functions as well. And so we are um, on, the, on the home stretch, if you will, of 2022. And um, do you believe surely, uh, soon we'll be approaching 2023? Uh, but certainly the Lord uh, has been kind to us and has been gracious to us, has been blessing us uh, with resources through our members to be a blessing not only to our church, but also to the community uh, at large. So please, if you have not received your mailing by now, uh, you may want to email the church or contact the church um, on Tuesday uh, to just let the church know that uh, you haven't received a mailing um, and, and make sure we have your correct uh, mailing address. This is a good opportunity uh, to figure out if you have uh, the right address on file with your church. Amen. I uh, want to also make mention of in that, um, in that fly, in that mailing, uh, again, we have our church anniversary is the next thing that's coming up. Um, and so the next two weeks, you hear me announce and continue to announce um, giving towards our church uh, anniversary. We are celebrating how many years? 96 years. Ain't the Lord good? Uh, the Lord is good towards us, 96 years that he has blessed us over the years with wonderful pastors and leadership uh, that has brought the church to where we are right now. Um, and I made it uh, a priority, one of the priorities of our life of our church to make sure we celebrate life and celebrate uh, the years that the church um, has been given unto us, that God has created the church and allowed us to serve in his church. And we thank God for the Lord's church. And so we'll be celebrating 96 years. The whole month of September, every Sunday, we'll be doing something to highlight our church. For September is the month of the existence of, of St. Timothy Community Church. Uh, the third Sunday will be our main focus in which we celebrate our church. Um, and we'll have a guest preacher to come in, Reverend um, Cynthia Ligon. Uh, and she is of the First Baptist Church of Riverhead, and uh, from Riverhead, New York, my hometown. And she'll be coming in, and she'll be preaching uh, for us that Sunday. Uh, we'll be honoring our 90-year-olds that Sunday morning as well. And then when we leave uh, service, we'll go outside and enjoy a wonderful picnic like we did last year. And so in order to do all of these great things, we need your support, St. Timothy. Amen. And so your monetary support is certainly uh, is being requested. We're asking for all ministries. Uh, if you would give $100 towards um, our church anniversary uh, and those members who desire and, and will and willing uh, to give $96 that supports uh, the 96 years, represents 96 years of our church existence. And uh, you may say, well, Pastor, you know, I don't have $96. Well, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> I'm talking to the members that have the $96, and some have more. And so if you have the desire in your heart to give more than the $96, you'll make up for the ones who can't get do the 96 
And as we come together last year, you are a blessing to this church. And we raised uh, well over $7,000 for our church anniversary. And we're able to meet our obligations. Amen. Meet our obligations. And then we're also able to have extra dollars to be applied to the mortgage uh, elimination of our church. And so everything that we do, all your giving, it goes to the functionality of the church and anything that's left over, we, we put towards uh, the mortgage so we can eliminate our mortgage. So everything that you do for this church, know that it's being a blessing to our church. And so we encourage you to do just that. Uh, we want to recognize that um, uh, I want to have a president's uh, meeting. So all heads of all ministries of our church uh, on August, Monday, August 22nd at 6 p.m. We'll put it into the bulletin next week, and we'll send an email out as well this week to remind you. But you may want to jot that date down, Monday, August 22nd, 6 p.m. Uh, I want to meet with all of the heads of ministries of our church, all presidents, vice presidents, treasurers. Uh, we'd like for you to be a part of that meeting. Uh, that'll be an in-person meeting, uh, and we'll have virtual as well. We want to uh, make mention of um, a bit of sad news that um, Brother um, Rodney Somerville has uh, transitioned um, and he's with the Lord. Um, his uh, daughter, uh, Carmen, uh, gave me a call and uh, to let us know that he has passed. And so we're waiting for the funeral uh, arrangements to be made, but we know that he has been a longtime member of this church and served well in this church, um, particularly on the usher board. Uh, ministry, and so we want to come and celebrate his life um, and celebrate the legacy that he has left and certainly support his daughter, Carmen, as she goes through this transition. Uh, we want to make mention of tomorrow uh, at 11 a.m. will be the services of Deborah Black's uh, mother, and so those of you that are, um, are very connected with her and her family, uh, we want to be of support to her and her family as well on tomorrow. The funeral's at uh, Trinity Baptist Church, Reverend Gardner is the pastor there, and we'll be there to support her and her family. We ask that you'll keep all the bereaved uh, in your prayers. Uh, certainly, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Kane uh, had lost their son. Uh, um, and he has transitioned, and um, they uh, were uh, in, in Atlanta. I'm not sure if they're back as of yet, um, but they were taking care of their son's business down there in Atlanta. Let's keep them certainly uh, in our prayers. I believe they said they were coming back this week, but we want to keep them uh, pray in our prayers as well. There's so much going on uh, in our life of the church and uh, in many family, uh, any fa all the families that are represented in, within our church, there are things going on, and you never know what people are going through, but we do know that God is still in control. We do know that we have a God that we can call on and pray to to help us uh, when we are experiencing troubled times and we certainly thank certainly God uh, for being there on our side. Bible study. Uh, there have been many calls and requests uh, for when we're going to go back to our in-person Bible study during the week. And so your prayers have been answered. Amen. And so September uh, 7th on Wednesday, September 7th, we will begin. Be, uh, re we go back to our midweek uh, Bible study. Um, and so at 645, we just at the time just a little bit, but at 645, Bible study will uh, resume on Wednesday nights um, starting at September 7th. And those that uh, are not able to drive at night um, and, uh, and are better driving during the day where they can see the road, amen, we appreciate that. Uh, we have Thursday um, a Bible study at 2 p.m. It used to be at 12. I'm moving it to 2 p.m. from 2 to 3. And so if you want to be a part of that Bible study, uh, again, what I teach on Wednesday, I teach on Thursday. And so we want you to be a part of that uh, as well. Uh, we want to, at this point, uh, bring uh, Pastor Curran up, and, uh, and he's going to uh, give his announcement. But before he comes, he'll give his announcement, and then he'll do the offertory prayer and, uh, and, and, uh, and statement. But let's call um, Sister Holcomb to come at this time. We have some new members uh, that have completed their new members class. And we're always excited when... Uh, new members join St. Timothy. Amen. Amen. And we want to take a moment in our service to recognize them and welcome them to this body of believers.
Good morning. Precious, precious, precious church family and friends. It's always my pleasure to bring up the new members to receive their certificates. And so this morning we have two that I will be calling up. And the first one is Mrs. Addie Greer. Mrs. Greer was to receive her certificate um, Sunday before last, and she was ill, and we asked for prayer for her, and she's here. So God does answer prayer. <laughs> Ms. Greer has been away from this area for a while and now has returned. Pastor Jackson met with her parents, and she stated that St. Timothy is welcoming and that she is enjoying being here and we are so very thankful and we are blessed to have you here so it is a new member certificate having manifested credible evidence that miss addie greer has been converted and has entered into covenant with saint timothy community church and having completed the course of instruction for new members, is hereby awarded this certificate, signed by Reverend Dr. Ramin M. Jackson, pastor, Gregory Jones, president of the trustee board, and Carol Holcomb, teacher. So welcome. Thank you. And we finished a couple, two, two people finished this morning, but they are husband and wife, and they could not stay for the entire part of this, or maybe would have been gone by this time. Um, so we will hold off on giving them their certificates until uh, next week, because they would like to have them together. And of course, we understand that and would like to do that. So our next member then to receive her certificate is Miss Delisa Mosley. So would you come up, Miss Mosley, please? <laughs> and Delisa is the daughter of Mrs. Vicki Mosley. There she is, standing up, absolutely. Okay. So she is looking for a church that is filled with energy you found it okay and her family member is here she also attended middle school with our pastor Curran okay and she stayed she's looking for a church or she was looking for and she found an inclusive church familial so we welcome you we thank you and her certificate I won't read it again, but it is the same, and we're awarding, having manifested credible evidence that Miss Jalisa Mosley, okay? So it is also signed by Reverend Dr. Ramin M. Jackson, pastor, Gregory Jones, president of trustee board, and Carol Holcomb, teacher. So we welcome you, and we're always looking for our youth, young members to come and, and, and work with us. Okay, God bless you, you. Okay. There was another member, I was looking for her today, but Ms. Crawford is not here today, but perhaps um, next week she may be here. In any case, when she comes, she also will be receiving her certificate. So we are just so pleased that our church is growing, that the Lord God Almighty is growing, St. Timothy. So we praise him for it. Thank you very much. I do greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Good morning once again, St. Timothy. Just have a quick announcement um, and thank you. Um, for those that know, and everyone should know, that yesterday we had our annual Back to School, Back to Christ Jam. 
And yesterday we were able to give away all of our supplies, over 200 supplies. Amen. We uh, rap raffled off laptops on yesterday. And I just want to say there was a, a young lady who, uh, after everything was all said and done while we were cleaning up, who had received a backpack and a laptop, she ran up to me and said, thank you so much. I really needed this. And it just goes to show how much of a blessing we can be to our community and to our youth. Because you just don't know what someone may be in need of. And St. Timothy, I applaud and thank you all for every donation that was given. I thank each and every volunteer. If you volunteered on yesterday uh, in any capacity, please stand up to be recognized. If you volunteered in the Back to School, Back to Christ Jam, let's give them a hand clap. They worked so diligently in making sure yesterday was successful from, from sunup until uh, the last person left on yesterday. So we do, that. I do thank you uh, for once again giving up your time to be a support to our back to school, back to Christ Jam. Also, a special thank you uh, to these uh, group of people who I probably got on their nerves and, uh, I, but I do thank them for all of the hard work that they put in for this Back to School, Back to Christ Jam. And so when I call your name, I do say a special thank you to Sister Shirley Moorhead. <laughs> Sister Rosie Washington. Sister Candace Smith. Dr. Linda Gunn. Sister Deborah Black. Sister Sandra Starling, Brother Lawrence Kelly, and Sister Cora Hoskins. And so those are the group of people that worked diligently, diligently with me to make sure that we had everything that we needed from every sponsor to every volunteer to security to activities to advertisement. And also a special shout out to Ms. Chelsea Whittington to who got the word out for us as well to the city, to the community of Gary. And so also thank you again, church family. And we have posted a banner outside con uh, thanking you all, each and every member you have been posted. If you have given to the Back to School, Back to Christ Gentlemen anyway, your name is shown in appreciation. And we just thank you and I'm just hyena glad that I am able to be a part of our church and do ministry. Our church is doing ministry. Again, I don't think you heard that our church is doing ministry. And we are departing to serve. And at this time, as we prepare our hearts and minds to give, there's some that have entered into the sanctuary who have not had a chance to give. Uh, by way through the fellowship hall, but there is still a chance for our online and for our Facebook viewers, and that is through Zelle and also our online giving. If you have an iPhone or an Android phone, you could download the app called Zelle, and you could give to our email at sttimothy at hotmail.com, or you could go on our church's website and click on the donate and give there and give your tithes and offering through there. God so is blessing us to sow and to also reap. And so we thank him for the harvest he has given us. God loves a cheerful giver, amen? amen. Not one out of grudge or out of necessity. And he is a blessing God. And so he has blessed us so much not to brag or to boast, but to simply claim that God is still in the blessing business. If you believe he's still in the blessing business, clap your hands. Give him some praise. So let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you and we love you for every gift, every giver. Lord, we ask that you bless some 10, some 50, some 100 fold back in the name of Jesus. God, we know that the harvest is plenteous, but the labors are few. But we thank you for the work that you have given us in your vineyard. In Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. At this time, if there are any youth that are inside the sanctuary, we do have youth church uh, at this time. Please follow me 
to the back of each youth that is inside. Also for our online and Facebook viewers, as you can see that's posted on the screen, there is Youth Church that is available for online viewers as well. Thank you.
Lord, please order my steps in your word. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come thanking you for your grace and your mercy and your loving kindness towards us. And God, as we now share in this moment that we glean from your word, touch thy word, for your word is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto thy path. And so bless us, O Lord. Speak to us this morning that whatever we stand in need of, God, through your word, we shall receive. And we declare healing, we declare miracles, we declare your power. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God say together, amen. Amen, amen, amen. We'll be looking in the book of Acts, chapter 3. It's the book of Acts, chapter 3. And I'll be um, kind of just going through verses 1 through 8. Um, Acts, chapter 3. Um, and we'll be dealing with just verses 1 through verse Eight. And while you have your finger on your bookmark there, I want to share this story as we go into the word this morning. I thought about this notion of what if God has a voicemail. And if we need something from God and we pray to God and think about if what we need hits his voicemail. It may go something like this. Thank you for calling my father's house. Please select one of the following options. Press one for request. Press two for thanksgiving. Press three for complaints. Press four for all other inquiries. What if God used the familiar excuse, all the angels are helping other customers right now? Please stay on the line. You, your call will be answered in the order it was received. Think about if God had a voicemail. Can you imagine these kinds of responses as you call on God to help you with your need in prayer? If you would like to speak to Gabriel, press 1 now. If you would like to speak to Michael, press 2 now. For a directory of all the angels, press 3 now. If you would like to hear King David sing a psalm while you're holding on, press four. To find out if a loved one has been assigned to heaven, enter his or her social security number. <laughs> For reservations at my father's house, press the letters J-O-H-N and then press 316. For answers on nagging questions about the age of the earth or where Noah's Ark is, please wait until you arrive here. And what about this? Our computers show that you have already called once today. Please hang up and try tomorrow. Or lastly, this office is closed this weekend. Please call again on Monday after 9 a.m. Think about if God had a voicemail and we were trying to reach him. But aren't you glad this morning that we serve a God and have faith in a God whose telephone line is never too busy? That he doesn't have a voicemail that we may leave a message. But he knows what we go through when we go through it and he knows how to show up right on time. You've heard the uh, saints used to say and still say, he may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 
through 8. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. And now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gates called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. Verse 3 says, And when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. And then Peter said, Look at us. And so the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them as far as money. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, walk. Or some of your translations may be King James that says, get up and walk. Or rise and walk. Verse 7, taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. I want to talk for a few moments on this thought as we share together. When your help is needed. When your help is needed. God, we thank you, we praise you, and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. What really causes people to beg or to become beggars? That's the question I raised this morning. There's a term that I researched that's called generational cycle of poverty. This term is applied to families who have experienced poverty for the last two generations. Generational poverty can affect every aspect of a person's life. It can affect a person's life through their the physical, through the social, emotional, and even mental. In economics, a cycle of poverty or the poverty trap is caused by self-reinforming mechanisms, thus causing poverty. Once it exists, it will continue to exist. In other words, if mama was on welfare, then the child has the mentality or the mindset of they'll be on welfare too. And the question that I raised to us is, when does the cycle break? I would submit to us this morning that there is a difference between a professional beggar versus a conditional beggar. Amen. Let me talk about very quickly about the difference between the professional beggar and the conditional beggar. The professional beggar is one that some of you may have come in contact with. They got brand new sneakers on and they're still asking you for two dollars. Professional beggar is one that uh, may not, uh, can have the ability, if you will, to fill out an application and work. They just don't want to because they're used to someone giving them when they ask for it. You've known some professional beggars. When you go grocery to the grocery store and you put your cart, you get out of your car and you get your shopping cart and you push your shopping cart to the entrance, and you find yourself running into a professional beggar. Or maybe it's at the, uh, the gas station when you're trying to pump gas, and there's a radar that goes up that says you got some money. And you'll find a professional beggar that will find you where you are, and you look at them, and you're trying to figure out why can't you get a job. You know that goes through your mind. But a conditional beggar is one that has a condition that is on them that prevents them from working. There are people who have disabilities. There are folk who have some physical and even those that have some mental issues that are going on in their lives where it seems like they cannot survive or cannot make it on their own and need some assistance. I submit to us this morning, there's a difference between a professional beggar and a conditional beggar. 
I would submit that this morning when we find in our text, we find that there is a conditional beggar. There's a man that has been brought to the temple. He has been uh, brought, carried, if you will, to the temple called, or the gate called Beautiful. And he's brought there because there are uh, some needs that this beggar, conditional beggar, if you will, needs. Well, you said, Pastor, how is it a conditional beggar? Because he has been conditioned to beg based on his condition. The Bible says that he is born into this world. He's born in where he's not able to walk doesn't have the activity of his limbs. And those of you that realize that when you don't have the activity of your limbs, it's hard to make it. Compared to someone who has both left and right legs and able to move and go about and be able to make ends meet. And, and think about right now, if you were not to have your legs, how that would stop you or prevent you from being able to uh, to work and be able to do things and for yourself and to be able, you would ask for or look for somebody in your family to help you to get up, get yourself together, and to make it. And if some of us have some family members, maybe in our lives, that are selfish, they don't even think about you. Wouldn't think twice about helping you. But in our text this morning, that there is this man who says, the Bible declares that he is carried by some people who have brought him to the church in order to get some help. We talked about this this morning in Bible study Sunday school that, that it's interesting that the people who have lifted him, the people that have helped him to get to the church house, why didn't they help him? Look at the text. It says they carried him. They left him at the church and they went about their business. How many times have we carried folk to the church but then left them and never sought about them or, or never follow up with them? This man is left by the church and while he's by the temple courts, uh, the Bible says that Peter and John now walk and as they're going to an hour of prayer, an hour in which they have been committed to go to the temple to pray, and as they go to the temple and pray, this man sees them. This man lays eyes on them. And I can relate to that, and some of y'all can relate to it as well. I shared this morning in Bible study. Uh, I was in the grocery store last month, and I was shopping. And as I was shopping, uh, all dressed up, and, uh, and uh, I said this morning in Bible study that uh, those that know me, uh, I didn't feel like cooking, so I went to Strack and Van Til, and I went to the, um, uh, the uh, meat department, and you can guess what I, I, I ordered. Chicken wings. Some chicken wings and some potato salad. And I told them this morning, and, and then I, I got some vegetables. You need a little, some green vegetables. And I got the, the string beans, but the string beans, you know, it needs a little help. So, uh, but I got the string beans and brought it home. And, but as I was shopping for my Sunday meal, and uh, a quick fix, if you will, uh, this young man was walking around uh, in the grocery store, and he was uh, approaching the customers asking for money. And, uh, and, and uh, me being uh, me at that time, uh, I got my chicken, and I got my potato salad, and my string beans, and in my cart, and I went the other direction. <laughs> because something said to me that he was coming my way. And how do I know that, uh, Coach? It's because he was going to everybody that was dressed up after they came from church. If you had a suit on, he was coming to you. If you had a dress on, if you dressed up and your hat on your head, the mothers were wearing in the, in the grocery store, he was coming to you. Why? Because you look like you got some money. Y'all know. Y all, y all, yeah. And so as he began to ask for, when he came to me and began to share his story, uh, you know, I watch a lot of Judge Judy and, and criminal law and all that kind of stuff, and, uh, and if your story don't make sense, something wrong. You're trying to get over. And that's what I felt in my spirit. Um, 
And so I contacted the uh, manager of the store and said, there's a gentleman walking around and he's, um, he's bothering uh, the, uh, the shoppers that are trying to shop, uh, particularly those that just been to church on Sunday morning. <laughs> but the point that I share that story is that there are some people who are professional beggars, but yet it takes away from those who really need the services or really need our help. And so then the question is, Pastor, how do we, how do we figure out when someone that, that is trying to get over on us versus someone that really needs the help? And all I can say to you is what I do is I just pray to God as they're asking me. And I'll let the Lord move on my spirit. If the Lord puts on my spirit to give, then I'm going to do what the Lord says. And, and, and we as the believers, we as Christians have to do just that. We have to rely on God for everything in our lives, even when we're trying to help somebody. To make sure we're helping the right person at the right time and at the right place. We find Peter and John finding their way to the temple. As they, their focus was on prayer, but as their focus was on prayer, somebody was in need. And this crippled man was at the gate called Beautiful. He wasn't in the church. And see, sometimes we want to bring people in the church to try to help them. But I would suggest to us, you got to help them outside the church and let them get themselves together. They'll come in the church. Why do we think we have to help people only when they get in the four walls of the sanctuary? You have to realize that you are the church. And God has called you to be of service to someone else that may be in need. And so let me give three things for us this morning. Because if you ever want to look at this thing, that when you know you have something to offer, and that's the only point I want to give this morning, how do I know that the Lord is using me. How do I know that the Lord is trying to um, uh, use the blessings that he has given unto me to be a blessing to someone else? And here's this one point. When you know you have something to offer. Don't you know everyone in here has something to offer? And in this text, there were three things that Peter and John had to offer. Number one is prayer. Number two is faith. And number three is power. Those are not points. Those are sub points. Here it is. Let me give you prayer. The Bible says, next slide, the Bible says in Acts chapter 3 and verse 1, uh, when the day that Peter and John were going up to the temple or going to the church, the Bible says, at the time, here it is, a prayer. In other words, Peter and John were going to church not for a social club meeting, they were not going to church or to the temple to have a church meeting. They weren't going to the church to have an August birthday group meeting. And I said that because it's August. But they were going to church for prayer, which means that they had a prayer life, which means that they were connected with God to know that there was a time where the people of God have to come together to pray. And I'll just submit to us this morning that if we ever are going to have an understanding that we have what it takes or we have something to offer, it's the demonstration this morning that you got up this morning because you knew on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. I've got to get to the house of prayer to thank God, to praise God, to hear a word from God, to be able to share with the people of God, to share someone my testimony, to give unto God, uh, to hear the word of God, to worship the Lord, to praise God, to lift up my hands in the sanctuary, to tell God thank you. There is a time where the believer comes together to say that at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning, I'm going to gather in the house of prayer to thank God for what he did for me all during the week. I don't care what's going on around me. I don't care what's going on in society. I don't care what's going on in the government. I don't care what's going on in my community, on my job. All I know is I can't wait to get to Sunday morning at 11 a.m. to get into the house of prayer to tell God, 
thank you, to tell God I love you, to tell God I serve you, to tell God you're worthy, to tell God you are mighty, to tell God you are sovereign, to tell God you are way maker, to tell God thank you for providing for me, thank you for loving me, thank you for caring for me. Is there anybody here this morning that said I had it on my calendar this week to make sure I enter the house of prayer on Sunday morning? If I got a backache, I'm still going to church. If I got a headache, I'm still going to church. If I got no money in the bank, I'm still going to church. If I got health issues, I'm still going to church. If I got enemies, I'm still going to church. If I feel defeated, I'm still going to church. If I have a loss of a loved one, I'm still going to church. Whatever my condition is, I'm taking my condition and getting to the Holy Ghost Hospital and giving God the praise for all he has done. They were on their way to church, to prayer. And then there was this beggar. So you have what it takes. You have what it, what you have something to offer. You have prayer. Well, Pastor, I don't have a whole lot of money. You've got prayer. Well, Pastor, I have a whole lot of money, but I gotta work on God helping me to help somebody else. Well, you got prayer. Prayer for yourself. And then pray that God reveals to you to help how to help other people. Here's the second thing. There's prayer, but they had also they carried uh, faith. They carried prayer, uh, and they carried here this faith. Peter looked straight at him as did John, and Peter said, look on us. Watching the text, in the beginning of the text, as I read, he looked at them first. But then Peter said, look at us. I shared in Bible study this morning that the first look, Peter and John were focused on going to the temple, focused on going to the church. They didn't see him, but the beggar saw Peter and John. But once they, the beggar saw Peter and John, then Peter and John saw him and said to him, look on us, as if he wasn't looking for the first time. He saw them, but Peter and John were saying, I don't want you to look at what I have, my possessions. You're looking at my money. In other words, maybe make it plain. You're looking at the fine jewelry I'm wearing. You're looking at the fine suit that I have on. You're looking at the fine car, the, the, the Cadillac, and, and the BMW that I'm driving. I didn't say a Mercedes, but I have one. <laughs> but Peter and John are saying to them, you're looking at the wrong thing. But what you ought to be looking at is who I'm connected to. He said, look at us. Look at, at our desire to 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 know God and want to love God and, and look at the fact that we serve a God that has provided everything that we have. And, and that's the message, that's the faith piece, is that he's saying to, the, to the, the beggar, I know where you are right now. I know that you're in the dumps. I know you're in a lowly place. I know that you have a condition on you. But what you're begging for is not going to help you. But what you need is going to provide for you, which is Jesus the Christ. Peter and John share their faith. And what I'm suggesting to us this morning is that we ought to share our faith. Why come to church every Sunday if you don't share your faith? Why, why, why allow God to, uh, to be a blessing in your life and and bless you with houses and land and bless you with cars and bless you with job, bless you with money, bless you with health, bless you with things where you don't share what God has given unto you. He says, look on us. And so the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. He still wanted money. I don't know about this Jesus you're talking about, but I do know something about a hundred dollar bill. But they share their faith. Here it is, people of God. Don't stop sharing your faith. Whomever you come in contact with, don't stop sharing that you believe in God, the Father, 
that he sent his son Jesus to Christ, and that he give us a comforter, the Holy Spirit, that is with us. Look at us. The people in the community ought to be looking at the church. Look at us. Look how we are surviving. Look how we are making it. That ought to be somebody's proclamation this morning. Look at us. Look. Look at the text. He didn't say look at me. This, this wasn't boasting about one particular person. This was, this was not boasting about uh, uh, or giving uh, a spotlight to one individual about what they have and who they have and who they're connected with, rather. But he said, look at what? Us. Look at, here it is, the church. Look at St. Timothy. Y'all look at y'all other. Look, look at each other. God has been blessing us. God has been keeping us. Look at us. Oh, I'm sure you can look at your problems. You can, you can talk about your circumstances. You can talk about what you don't have, what you wish you had, and you can talk about a whole lot of stuff. But when are we going to look at and talk about that God woke you up this morning? When, when are we going to look at the fact that God has brought many of y'all through your careers, and, and now you can just sit back and kind of relax and, and enjoy your retirement and, and enjoy the things that God has provided for you because you've worked 30, 40 plus years. Uh, look at us. Look at the fact that even those who have suffered with illness and God has healed you. Look at us. Look at the fact that those who have weighed with children and their children are coming back to the church. Look at us. Look at the fact that when there was a time in your life you had one pair of shoes, now you you go in your closet, you got 20 and 50 pairs of shoes. You don't know what shoe to put on this morning. You were trying to figure that out this morning when you got up. What color am I going to wear? What shoe am I going to put on? It's because of the blessings of God. And we as the people of God have to be able to rise up and tell folk what the Lord has done for us. How the Lord has brought us from a mighty long way. Share your faith. Here's the last thing I'm going to leave with you. you. You have something to offer. You have prayer. You have your faith, and then lastly, you have power. Why do we walk around like we got no power? Here's the text. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but what I do have I give unto you. In other words, uh, we, uh, we may not have money, or we may not have a whole lot of money, but we have something that's greater than money. We got something, see, money, money can, can, can run out. You know it can run out now, you know. You know money can run out, right? If you don't think so, look at your uh, investments now. Uh, a lot of our investments have dropped. Right? Money, money can be depleted. But there's something about knowing about the power of God never is depleted. He says, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. He didn't say in Peter's name. He didn't say in John's name. But he said in the name of the one that's greater than our name. The greater the one that has the power to work the miracle that needed to be worked in your life. In the name of Jesus. He says to him, some translations may say rise or get up. But here in the NIV it says walk. In other words, you can't stay where you are, but you have to get up and walk. Why do we think we help people when we just give them something and walk away? But we have to lean on our faith in God and the power of God that's within us and speak to the circumstance. Give life to what seems to look like death and say, get up. And walk. That's an action piece. That means when the word is given, the one that's receiving or hearing the word has to respond now to the word. So if I'm imparting in you to say, get up and walk, you have to respond by doing what? Getting up and walking. And when one doesn't get up and walk and respond to the word of God, then one is saying, I don't believe what the word is saying. But here it is. 
I believe what the word is saying when I hear the word of God and I respond to the word of God by giving action to the word of God. Doesn't the word say, be not doers, hearers of the word only, but be doers of God's word? There's got to be action to the word of God. He tells them to get up and to walk. That's power. Don't you know you have power? You have power to speak things into existence. You have power according to your faith not to, and I think what happens with us is that we are focused on the circumstance that we get caught up in the circumstance where we, it dilutes our faith. But I believe I have some believers here this morning that said my faith is not, and my power is not determined on my circumstance, but it's determined on the God that's in me that's within my circumstance. In other words, I walk in the power of God. I, 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 I praise in the power of God. I, I worship in the power of God. I pray in the power of God. I, I serve in the power of God. That where, whatever I do, the power of God is within me. That's why whenever I show up, things have to transfer, things have to change. Whatever I speak on, it has to come to fruition. Why? Because the power of God is within me. We've got to get back to the old church when the old saints that used to just pray over stuff and lay hands on things and, and things begin to come back to life. we got to get back to the church, the old church, uh, when the mothers and the fathers that would, suffer, that would get on the altar and begin to pray to God until the power of God shows up. We've got to get to, we got too complacent in times today. We let the enemy just come in our homes and wreck our houses, come in our church, wreck our church, come in our community, wreck our community. But when is the power? power of God going to raise up in the people of God and say for God I live and for God I die. When are the people of God going to rise up with the power of God and say I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus our Lord. When are the people of God going to rise up and say I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. Are there anybody is there anybody here this morning that can declare I've got power in me. There's power in me to succeed. There's power in me to rise up. There's power in me to work miracles. There's power in me to pray over my child. There's power in me to pray over my loved one that is sick. There's power in me to pray over one that is evildoers. There's power in me to resurrect those that are poor in spirit. There's power in me to be able to lay hands on my child and they shall do well in school. There's power in me to be able to lay hands over my circumstance and my circumstance will turn around. Is there anybody here this morning that says there's some power in me? And I didn't come this morning powerless, but I came this morning with the power of God in my life. When I raise my hand, I'm raising it because there's power in me. When I open my mouth and tell God thank you, I'm opening my mouth because there's power in me. Is there anybody here this morning that said I never should have made it. I never should have got through it. I never should have overcome it, but it's because the power of God that's within me. Let, let, me, let me close with this. I feel like I got to close now. I, I, don't, I don't want to, but I know I have to. Um, but there's a man uh, named uh, Theodore Williams. Uh, and the Lord brought his story back to my remembrance. Uh, and uh, if, if you, back in the 80s, early 80s, he uh, was, um, he's a, uh, a personality, um, a person that uh, is shared on the radio. His voice attracts um, your attention when he speaks. And, um, but uh, they called him Ted, Ted the Golden Voice. And, uh, and when he would speak, he causes the environment in which he's in to come to attention. So Ted was, uh, he was homeless, and, and he was one of those ones that would just stand on the side of the road and have a sign that says, help me, please, if you will. He was one of those ones that would carry the sign that says, help me, or I need food, or I need something. And Ted would stand on the side of the road, and, and he would beg for money and beg for assistance, beg for help. And uh, there was this 
uh, man that came and that was driving that saw him and saw his sign um, as he was standing on the side of the road asking for help. As you see on the left side of the picture, that's him asking, begging for help. And one may question, how did he get to be on that right side with his hair cut and his smile showing all his teeth and being in a suit looking like he's successful? How did he get from homelessness to being successful? Well, there's something in between that. There's a story in between that. There is an interruption in between that. There is prayer, faith, and power in between that. And so a man came by and uh, was going to give him money and heard his voice as he was begging for money. And that one man changed his life and took him from off the street and put him into an environment where he can make money for his voice. And now he's an all-American guy that personality um, and uh, radio announcer. And you would hear his voice all over the radio and over uh, sports broadcasts and you would hear this man's voice. How it took one individual to listen to the opportunity of him and giving him an opportunity to be successful. He goes from holding up a sign to now holding up his pride. He goes from holding a sign to now lifting up his head and being proud that he is now somebody. Because somebody stopped by to help him. Somebody stopped by to giving him an opportunity. Someone like a Peter and John. And I would submit to us this morning, we may not have been holding signs. That may not be your story. But your sign may be something different. Maybe it's not poor in wealth, but maybe it's poor in spirit. Maybe your sign is I've got so much going on in my life where it's, it's bringing my spirit down. Maybe that's your sign. But maybe it is, I, I, I got, I'm poor in health, that my health keeps failing, and it seems like I'm not getting better. Maybe that's your sign. And I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning, but each of us in here this morning have a sign. We're carrying something. But here is the good news this morning. I feel like shouting. The good news is, like that man came to help uh, Brother Ted, and like in the story this morning that Peter and John came to help the crippled man, there is a man that has come to help us. Oh, if you haven't guessed who that man is, his name is Jesus. And when we accepted Christ on our side in our lives, whatever sign that we have been holding, God was able to help us get rid of our signs. And I believe this morning that there's somebody here this morning that says, I've been carrying some stuff. I've been carrying my own sign, but this morning I'm releasing the sign. This morning I'm releasing it and I'm giving it all over to God and let God work it out. Is there anybody here this morning that says, I need the help of God in my life. I need the help of God to raise me. I need the help of God to keep me. I need the help of God to heal me. I need the help of God to help me. Is there anybody here this morning that said, I'm carrying something this morning. I'm carrying a weight, and I can't keep this weight by myself. I need God to help me work it out. Is there anybody here this morning that can declare, I've got some signs I'm holding, but I've got a God that knows about my signs and able to deliver me, able to set me free, able to make a way out of no way, able to carry me, able to pull me up out of my rut. Is there about 50 of us here? 
here this morning that can testify, I've got a sign, I've got a weight, I've got a burden, I've got some issues, but whatever my stuff is, I'm giving it over to God, and he's going to work it out. Matter of fact, I know he's already worked it out. Oh, come on, can we praise him for a few moments and thank God for working it out. He is my helper. Didn't David said in Psalms 46, he said, he is my refuge and strength, a present help in time of trouble. Did not David said in Psalms 121, he said, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills which cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord who makes heaven and earth. I come to tell somebody this morning, you've got a helper and his name is Jesus. A wonderful counselor, a mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, the bridge of a troubled water. He is my help. He's the one that rescued me. He's the one that saved me. He's the one that made a way for me. Is there any of us this morning that says, I know who my helper is. He woke me up. He helped me. He pulls me. He helps me into my destiny. Thank God for the helper who's always working it out. Do you need a miracle this morning? Call your helper. Do you need something worked out for on your behalf? Call on your helper. Your helper knows all about it. Your helper watched you sleep last night and he helped you to wake up this morning to see another day. Thank God for the helper. So as God has helped us, he's helped us to be able to help somebody else. Here's the message this morning. Your help is needed. I don't care how old or young you are. If you hear this morning on the sound of my voice, your help is needed. Pastor, where, I hear you, where is my help needed? Look in your family. Some of y'all, you don't got to go far. You got some family members that need what? They need help. E even when they don't act like or think they need help, they're in denial. You, you, you have to be the one to see and have the vision to see when your family needs help. Why, why, why see and know that your family's crying out for help and, and, and I feel the spirit of suicide and, and you know someone's about to commit suicide and, and, and end their life and you can see it and you know what's going on. Help. Find them the help that they need. God gives us the spirit of discernment to be able to know when one needs help. And how do you know that? Because you experienced it for yourself. He helped you. And he's still helping you. Therefore, you are qualified. You heard I said you're qualified to give help to somebody else. Now, Pastor, what if they don't receive my help? Well, you offered the help. And as long as you plant the seed that you offered the help, it's up to them to what? To receive the help. And if they don't receive it right now, don't think it's not going to, they, 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 they are totally discarding you. Just let that seed soak in. I heard it. Let that seed marinate. Let it grow. Because things are going to get at its worst to the point where they're going to come right back to you and say, I, I know you came to me last year for an ex about help, and, um, and I was too prideful, or whatever the reason is, but I need your help. Let us stand all over the sanctuary. You have... what it takes, you have what is within you to be of help. But God knew what we need when we needed it. He knew that we will be a sinful nature, that we need to be cleansed, washed in his blood. So God sends Jesus, his only begotten son, because he knew we needed his help. We needed to be saved.
And there may be someone here in the sound of my voice or someone maybe viewing or listening online that says, I need the help of the Savior. We offer Christ to you. We offer Christ to you, my sister. He will give you brand new life. That's what he offers. And give you life more abundantly. Is there one that would come? I will receive you this morning. That's the desire of your heart to be part of this fellowship, part of this church. Would you come, my brother? Would you come, my sister? Come to Christ. Second call is I'm already saved but don't have a church home. Amen. Second call is I'm already saved. I don't have a church home, and I want this church to be my church home where I worship where I serve the Lord. I come on the Christian experience. Would you come? He will give you a brand new life. That's what he offers us. Life more abundantly. So come. Come, come. Come to Christ. To Christ. Maybe someone is viewing that says, I, I couldn't get to the house of God, but I hear the Lord moving on my heart and my spirit, and I want to become a part of this church. Let me pray for you, my brother or sister that's viewing online. Turn to God, we ask that you would just bless right now those that are viewing, that have heard the word this morning, and their lives have been transformed through the word. And they have a desire to be a part of this ministry. God, I pray that you would touch their souls, O oh Lord, that they would accept you as Lord and Savior of their lives. And then connect to the ministry, O oh Lord, by calling our church, emailing us, reaching out to us, and as we respond to their request of being connected with this fellowship. We pray that you would touch them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We offer Christ to you. Oh, my brother, we offer Christ to you. Oh, my sister, he will give you brand new life. He will give you brand new life. Life abundantly. We come right now, O oh Lord, touching and agreeing right now for her soul, O oh Lord, for her life, O oh God. God, we pray right now that you would just have, let your Holy Spirit rest rule and abide in her, O oh Lord. God, give her the strength that she needs, the power, O oh God, to be able to live and to be able to survive, to be able to handle what she needs to handle, O oh Lord. God, we pray right now that you increase her faith right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I pray right now that you will touch right now those that may be around her that uh, can be of support to her, oh God. Take away those, O oh Lord, that bring her down. Take away those, O oh Lord, who are harming her, O oh God. We pray right now, O oh Lord, that you would give her, O oh Lord, what she needs right now in the mighty name in of the Jesus. Name of Jesus. Hey, glory. Say together, amen. 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 He will give you.
you brand new life. He'll give you life abundantly. Oh, come. Come on. Oh, to Christ. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, saints, pray. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise your name, Lord. Touch right now the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah to your name, Lord God. Hallelujah to your name, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Good morning, church family. Mary James is in the sound room, and she asked me to come. Uh, she felt the Holy Spirit that someone was going to come and join our ministry here at St. Timothy Community Church. This morning, we have Ms. Ms. Tawana Mallory. She's coming by Christian Experience. Her birth month is January and she is connected to the Bullocks. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We, we thank God, we thank God, we thank God. Now, she's been coming to church, and I said to her last Sunday, I said, now the next time you come to church, I think the Lord's going to move on you. <laughs> yeah, so we thank God that God has moved on her spirit to be a part of this fellowship. And saints, I want y'all to embrace her. Amen. When new members come to our church, I know we do it already, but I just want to say it again. Let us embrace them with the love and support and, and uh, don't everybody run at them at once and like, come join this and come join that, come do this, do that. <laughs> Let the Lord work on their heart and, uh, and be able to uh, show their gifts and what they, the Lord is leading them to do. Amen. Amen. And we certainly thank God uh, for her coming. Uh, and, uh, and I know when y'all saw uh, the Bullocks, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bullock come down the aisle, he said, they already belong to our church. <laughs> but they came to be a support uh, to their niece. Amen. Wonderful. Ain't, ain't God good, y'all? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I thank God for the, for the visitation of his Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. We thank God for the visitation of his Holy Spirit. Let us begin to pray as we leave this sanctuary, uh, certainly not from presence of the Almighty God. Almighty God, we thank you, O oh Lord, for what our eyes have seen and ears have heard. God, we thank you for your touch this morning of your precious Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, that reminds us that you are still alive and working on our behalf. And so, God, I pray right now over your people, O oh Lord. I pray a blessing over their lives, O oh God. I pray this week will be a better week than last week, O oh God. I pray whatever stumbling blocks are in the minds or in the way of your people, it will be removed in Jesus' name. Anyone that's looking for a miracle, anyone that's looking for a healing, God, I pray right now that you would dispatch your angels of healing upon your people in the mighty name of Jesus. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling, to the only wise God, our Savior, he who has majesty and dominion now and forevermore and the people of God say together amen amen amen
to like and follow us on social media. Look up St. Timothy Community Church on Facebook or visit our website at www.stTimothyChurch.org. Share this with your family and friends. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Have a blessed week.